Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you the various normalization functions that we've got within Fretix 1D with a specific focus on total protein normalization. Now total protein normalization is moving towards being the, the standard for acceptance within journals. This is because the old kind of technique of comparing your protein of interest to a housekeeping protein, it's been discovered that within a lot of experimental conditions, your housekeeping gene, your housekeeping protein expression can uh, vary, uh, whereas they were believed to be kind of a constant measure. It's now more, you know, it's preferred to express your protein of interest as a relative function of all of your protein that is in your lane. So I've got a multiplex image here, and that gives me more options than if I had a single channel image for normalization. So the first normalization mode I've got available to me is available in both single channel and multi-channel images and that's the single band method. Now within Fretix 1D you can select a reference band for each channel. So your reference band would be either some kind of control or some kind of maximum treatment or whatever the band is that you want to compare all your other bands to relatively. Um, so if I select a band within say channel 1 Say say this is my 100% treatment, I know it doesn't really make sense this gel, but uh, say this is my 100% treatment and I want to see the effect treatment has in varying concentrations upon the expression of this protein, whatever it may be. If I select that band and then click on new selected, my, all, all of my, um, all of my um, other bands will be expressed relative to how they compare to this band and I can do that if I come down to channel 2 I can select a different band for a different reference point within this channel and again everything gets gets measured relative within that channel to that protein we can we do still support the ability to represent you know um, to compare all of your to normalize all of your bands to a housekeeping protein so within this setup you would have a single channel would contain your protein of interest and a secondary channel would com would contain um, your, your housekeeping protein and then the software would compare the bands in one channel to the bands in another and compensate for any variance within your housekeeping gene and represent that as a normalized function. And then if we come down to the total lane volume, this is what we call kind of total protein concentration, total lane volume. It's all the same kind of normalization technique. Uh, so what this mode does, and again, it's only available within multi-channel images, it allows you to se select a reference channel in which your total protein stain would be. So say if you've taken a gel or a block and you've probed it once with your antibody to find your protein of interest, you've stripped it and then you've used a total protein stain, um, like something from the Spiro family for example, um, you could then use that channel and tell the software within this channel is my total protein stain, so I've stained everything theoretically that should be present within the lane. And then the software will analyse all of the lanes in that channel, find the most intense lane within that channel and then normalize all lanes within that channel to that lane and then normalize across the other channel to your protein of interest to accommodate for any variance in total protein concentration relative to your band concentration of your protein of interest. It sounds complex. There's quite a few articles on the internet about the normalization technique. It is an industry standard technique, so it is very well characterized. We use the same kind of mathematical formula as anyone else within the industry does. Um, you can read within Fretix 1D, you can get a more comprehensive mathematical description of how we perform that normalization. Some of it's described here, or you can press F1 within the software to access a comprehensive help document that goes into a little bit more detail about lots of the mathematical functions that derive the data that comes out of Fretix 1D. So I just thought I would focus more on, on, on that within this video, just in case anyone was specifically wanting to find different ways of normalization and how they could do it within Fretix 1D. As ever, thanks for watching. And if you'd be interested in a free trial of Fretix 1D to use with your own images from your own lab, please check out the links in the description below.